A reading from the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It won't surprise you that a great source of conversation between Kevin and me, there's Kevin right there, um, is our four children. And this week we were talking about our daughter, Sarah, whom many of you know. Sarah is turning 50 this year. <laughs> Celeste is going, <gasps> happens. Um, but she, when she was a, a, a child, she begged to take horseback riding lessons. And so uh, her first horse was a little pony. And, and when she was in middle school and she had outgrown her pony, we went all out. And she was a wonderful little horseback rider. And we went all out and bought her a horse called Early Christmas. And early Christmas was beautiful and was a great jumper. Uh, if only Sarah could get her to do it, because sometimes early Christmas could, would jump, and sometimes she wouldn't, right? As horses are sometimes. And so there's a story about that that Kevin could tell better than I, and I won't have the facts right, sorry, honey, but. I'll be close, the point will be there, that Sarah, was, Sarah and, had, and early Christmas had been training to ride in a, in a big show at Pebble Beach. And uh, Sarah was, knew she could get Christmas to jump all those jumps. And so, and so she did very well at the first part of the course. And by the way, uh, Kevin informs me that, you, that a, a rider gets three refusals, okay? So she was just sailing over jumps on early Christmas, and I, I, I'm not sure if it was the last jump, but I'll say it was, that early Christmas did what early Christmas does, and she stopped. So Sarah turned her around and lined her up again and got ready to go again, and, and she stopped. <laughs> and then that darn horse stopped a third time. And we could hear the announcer saying uh, to Sarah, dismissed, meaning you're done, darling. Uh, and Sarah was not to, she was not done. She was going to show early Christmas and everybody that early Christmas, she could get early Christmas to jump that jump. And she used her crop and she did whatever she did. And, and uh, meanwhile, the announcer was saying, dismissed, dismissed, <laughs> sailed over the jump. And the crowd was delighted, but of course, uh, she was a little embarrassed. <laughs> well, 
Well, so sometimes early Christmas could and sometimes she couldn't. And it turns out that in the gospel today, the disciples are in the same predicament in terms of their ability to heal people and, and cast out demons. Sometimes they could and sometimes they couldn't. Earlier in Mark, uh, we heard that Jesus sent them out uh, into the villages two by two, where it is said they cast out many demons and anointed oil with oil those who were sick and cured them. But later, when they tried to cure a little boy with a, an evil spirit, they could not do a thing. And now, in today's lesson, there's some renegade, some nobody, some outsider casting out demons, or at least trying to, in Jesus' name. And the disciples say, well, it's just too much, it's just not right. And the ugly face of resentment settles in their hearts. So uh, they do what disciples often do. They run to Jesus. John goes to Jesus and complains. And Jesus startles him by saying, do not stop him. For no one who does a deed of power in my name will soon afterward be able to speak, speak evil of me. Wait, John was sure that Jesus would stop this guy. But I think Jesus knew if the disciples were fussing about whether or not they could cast out demons and whether or not that other guy should or shouldn't been able to do it if they certainly weren't able to, well, then, then they couldn't be thinking about much else, could they? Disciples seething with resentment certainly aren't in any mood to be, for example, healing the sick. Of course, resentment isn't the only negative emotion found among those disciples. Last week, we had jealousy. Remember, the, the disciples were arguing on the road about who was the greatest and who would get to sit at Jesus' right hand. And we know that guilt and regret are some of their themes with Jesus, Judas' betrayal and and Peter denying Jesus. And we can relate to these feelings, can't we? <laughs> Too bad, we can. And these negative emotions are just as limiting in us as they were in the disciples. Jesus had high expectations for his disciples, just as God has high expectations for us and how we behave in our church community and in the world. Jesus is clear in today's gospel. We are to set a good example for the little ones, which is not just children, but also those who are small or little in faith or new in faith. God wants us always to have our faces turned toward goodness, to present ourselves as we are in his sight forgiven, loved, and free. But when we do the opposite, when we are bound by something like resentment or anger or regret, it drains our energy, doesn't it? It, it takes away our life and makes us exist on a, on a different, lower level. Sometimes I think it's like a tumor that puts pressure on the healthy tissue. It crowds out who we really are, or at least who we want to be. Maybe that's what Jesus is talking about when he starts going on and on this, these terrible words about amputation. Pluck out your eyes, cut off your hands and feet that cause you to stumble. Harsh words, aren't they? But have you ever been around anyone who was carrying a load of resentment? That person can't really be present to you because of his preoccupation with feeling wronged. His thoughts are circular, always coming back to land on that slight. And sometimes it's not that other person. Sometimes it's us, isn't it? And sometimes we are really enjoying our own little pity party, if, if truth be told. Other times we want to lay down our burden, but we just don't quite know how. Sometimes being really honest with God is the beginning of healing of resentment. Or we could talk to our priest or a trained counselor. The 12-step program has a formula that's, that's been useful to many. You take a moral inventory and then um, you're ready, then you say you are ready to have God remove your shortcomings and ask him to do so. 
Sometimes by grace, phew, the Holy Spirit just causes you to actually have a change of heart. Well, being human beings, no matter how hard we work on letting go of these things, sometimes, like Sarah and her horse, sometimes we can and, and sometimes we can't. But God who loves us and who wants us to be light and salt in the world keeps calling us to come home to him and to ourselves to be part of the kingdom of God here on earth. Amen.